Hey guys, Corbin here, and this video is about my custom CNC spoil board and how you can make one for your own machine. Now, it is at least half the cost of a lot of similar designs. I'm going to go over the inspiration for my design, why I designed things the way I did, a cost comparison of designs, and finally, I'm going to go over the full build process of how I made it. Now, I have an Avid Pro CNC machine with a 4 foot by 8 foot table, but a lot of the techniques here are applicable to any CNC router machine. You can download my CAD file for the design and use it as is, or you can customize it for your particular needs. The link will be in the description. So what you want to make on your CNC machine is going to determine what your spoil board looks like. If you're cutting a lot of sheet goods, then your best bet might be a vacuum table. However, vacuum tables are expensive, they are really loud, and they require a lot of energy to run. I don't do a lot of sheet good work with my machine, and I like to make interesting projects that really wouldn't even hold down well with a vacuum table. Two other ways to hold down workpieces are either a T-Track system or wood T-nuts. So I used the T-nut table on my Tormac PCNC for quite a while, and I felt like the spacing was never quite right. So I'm going to go with T-Tracks. The inspiration for my design came from Jay Bates. If you haven't seen his video, I'll put a link in the description and up above, and I highly recommend watching it. So I think it's a great design, but I set out to improve it. So my design uses two sheets of MDF, while Jay's design uses three sheets. So I wanted to maximize the height of the CNC projects that I could do. And if you use three sheets of plywood instead of two, you're going to limit the height that you can cut under your gantry. And obviously, two sheets of MDF is going to cost less than three sheets. Now my top MDF slats are screwed down. I did this to allow me to easily replace slats whenever they wear out from use or resurfacing. I can also choose to just replace one or two slats in my heavily used area, and I don't have to replace the entire table. Jay's design glues together all three sheets of MDF. This might require buying three new sheets when your spoil board needs replacing, and that can get quite expensive. Another reason to use screws is that it will allow me to easily remove the entire spoil board and put it back on, and I might want to remove it if I want to cut something that is eight inches thick and maximizes the use of my gantry height. The disadvantage of using screws means you need to avoid hitting them whenever you're machining into your table, which probably isn't a very common operation. I'm also sure that glue would be way stronger than screws. Next is my T-Track selection. I used cheap Zokmok T-Tracks from Amazon. Jay uses Armor Tool Double Quick Tracks, which cost nearly three times as much as the Zokmok ones, but he does it to prevent them from pulling out. So let me explain that a little bit. Wood screws and MDF are prone to being pulled out. I decided to test how hard it would be to pull a track out using some hold downs. So this is a sample T-track that I have and a sample piece of MDF with four screws. It's a half inch long wood screw and a 764th of an inch pilot hole. This is my strength test. So if this was your workpiece, you'd be holding it down something like this. So it's actually really hard to pull it out. So it's really hard to pull it out, but I am getting some spacing underneath. And in one of my other tests, I did actually manage to pull it out. But the force to pull it out actually does start to damage the T-Track. So the Armor Tool double T-Tracks totally prevent any pullout by having a bottom track that allows you to screw in from the bottom of your spoil board to make pullout just impossible. So even though pull-out isn't very easy, it is still possible to get pulled out a little bit, and so I thought I could do something to make it better without resorting to the more expensive T-Tracks. And the solution is really easy. I just overlap the MDF above the T-Track. And this provides some additional downforce that prevents it from pulling up. I've been using this system for six or seven months, and I haven't had any issues. So Jay's idea of creating a grid using 22 millimeter dog holes is excellent. These bench dogs create a bunch of perfectly aligned corners that can be used at very specific locations. I can easily replicate alignment for a particular corner. So I can put a workpiece on, clamp it down, take it off, put it back in, and know it's in exactly the same location. These offsets are also easy to use in CAD programs like Fusion 360 and Vectric V-Carve. 
The dog holes also allow you to use a lot of different workstations to replicate one part multiple times. I also utilize this when the machine is actually cutting on one workstation. I can go and set up something for another operation while it's in the process of doing its thing and get it all ready. When that one finishes, I can just hit go on this next part. I think I'll do another video on how to really utilize work offsets. And that way I can talk about how to do it in Fusion 360 and Vectric V-Carve to really take advantage of it. The only thing about these aluminum bench dogs is that they are expensive. Jay uses a brand called TSO for their bench dogs, and I found another brand, Precision Bench Dogs, which cost about half as much. Okay, so let's get into the costs. I made a spreadsheet to compare the price of the two designs. This was back in January or February, and the cost of MDF has gone up a bit since then. I'll link to all these products down in the description so you can look at things yourself and make your own opinions on what you think you should get. But uh, my spoil board design in total cost $345. Jay's design cost $967, which is nearly three times the cost of my design. And replacing the MDF might be a big expense later on in the use of the spoil board. The next thing to talk about are layout and size considerations. Here's my design in Fusion 360, where I start with Avid CNC's base design that they provide on their website. This is for a four foot by eight foot table, but a lot of things are parametric. This means you can hit the FX button in the toolbar and bring up the change parameters dialog or window. This lets you tweak a lot of the settings and they all update in real time for whatever sizes you want to have in your design. Now, my actual table is slightly different than this designed. I tried to avoid some things and I have an eight foot CNC table, but it's a lot shorter because I have an area in the front that I'm reserving for a vertical spoil board and a rotary table at some point in the future. So mine's a little bit different. I took my base file and modified it for a base 4x8 machine so that you guys can use it as is and modify it. So I settled on 5 inches of center to center spacing for all my T-tracks. So it took me a while to settle on this 5 inches of spacing for the tracks. And what I did to decide that is I went to CAD, created some virtual solids of the stock I'd usually be cutting, and put it down the table. And then I could kind of figure out what layouts would work best, and I went from that and decide five inches seemed to work best for me. Other things I considered, I considered different spacing, but I thought that just wasn't necessary because if you have things running on one axis, you can usually clamp it in some way. The other thing I considered was also having some tracks running along the Y axis because I've seen some people doing that. And again, it just didn't seem necessary, so I didn't do it. One thing that you notice is that my first slat is actually a little bit uh, shorter, and I did that just so I could have a T-track as close to the end as possible, but still have it be held down by the top slat. I also spaced my dog holes five inches on center, and the reason I did that is I just thought it was a good size. I tried to err on the side of not drilling too many holes, and in hindsight, I don't think that was a big deal, but I can always add more holes later. Can't remove them. First of all, let me talk about the base of the table. I've seen several people putting wood cross members against the aluminum cross members to have something to screw the base spoil board into. Then they can use the machine to actually flatten all those wood cross members to get them a perfectly flat base to put the first sheet of MDF. I don't think this is necessary at all and it's just a waste of time and money. And the reason why is because using the extrusion with the T-nuts is pretty easy to line up. You don't need to flatten the base because ultimately when you get everything together, you're going to be flattening the top of your spoil board anyways. However, one thing I did notice while building my table is this. There isn't any support in between the cross members along the Y axis. So in an area like this, I was getting a lot of flex. I was seeing up to 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch of movement. I solved this by installing some pieces of MDF in those areas. I just attached them with T-nuts and bolts and had them to be uh, just a little bit loose. After I had my spore board on, I could push them up tight against it and that prevented any flex from happening. The first thing I did was cut the spore board base holes. This layout was based on what Avid CNC provided and I double checked it to make sure everything would line up with my particular extrusion locations. 
I did change some of the holes to be a little bit smaller because I felt like they were a little bit too large. And that was about it. Now, I didn't record any video of me actually cutting those holes, but let me describe how I did it. So you have to cut some holes in the MDF that directly align with the aluminum extrusion, and you don't want to hit the aluminum extrusion, so that's really easy. Just take your workpiece, the whole spoil board base table, and slide it forward uh, about an inch, and use that as your origin, and then do your cuts, and you won't hit the table. However, I'm not sure if that idea will work for everyone because it depends on how far your bit goes in front of the table. And if you don't have enough room to actually do the first slot, then it may not work. And you could just cut it, cut the holes at the exact location where the table is going to be and prop them up on some two by fours. For me, this idea worked really well because I have a big hole in the front and the machine could come over here and cut the front holes without any issues. Once the holes were cut, I attached the base spoil board down to the table using the hardware that came with the machine. I didn't surface this first layer of MDF, but in hindsight, it might have been a good idea to do that, and that way my next layer of MDF would have needed minimal servicing. I wanted the T-tracks to be perfectly aligned on the table, so I used the CNC machine to groove very shallow tracks along it. I cut them with a 3 8 of an inch spiral down cut bit, and use 1800 RPM, 216 inches per minute. I then drilled some pilot holes for the wood screws using a 764 of an inch drill bit. And this drill bit will hold fine in an eighth of an inch collet. I screwed down all the T-tracks in the middle of the table. Notice that the tracks don't go all the way to the edge, which means I can't put a clamp right at the edge. The tracks are 48 inches wide, while the MDF is 49 inches wide, leaving a half an inch of gap on both the edges. I meant to do something different, but I just forgot. But we'll get back to that in a moment. Because at this point, I realized the quarter 20 bolt heads would get caught on some of the screw heads that hold down the T-track. Not all of them, but some of them. My solution was to remove the wood screws and chamfer the T-tracks a bit deeper. I mentioned the issue to the manufacturer, and they said they would address it, but I don't know for sure if they did. So if you're using them, make sure the screw heads sit slightly below the metal before you screw them all on. Unscrewing all the T-tracks also meant I could fix the edge issue. I took my 48-inch long T-tracks to my horizontal bandsaw and cut them in half. I then re-drilled my pilot holes at the right location and screwed them all on. This allows the T-tracks to go all the way to the edge of the spoil board and gives me an area in the center to also slide in hold downs, which is really handy. One thing that I should mention is if you're using my T-track layout in the Fusion 360 file, then one of the T-tracks is going to fall right over one of the spoil board attachment holes and you're going to need to drill uh, another hole in your T-track and attach it in a different spot for that one. Okay, I'm going to show you guys what I did for my spoil board top, but I really don't recommend copying me. Instead, I watch through and I'm going to talk about a better way to do the same thing. I put my top piece of MDF on the table and temporarily screwed it down. I then used the CNC to cut out some slots for the T-tracks. Now, at first, I did do some test cuts in scrap pieces just to make sure everything would fit. Now, here's where I started to have some trouble. MDF is really heavy, and it was pretty hard to flip the piece over and get it perfectly lined back on the table. But once I put it down, I realized I had another problem, and that the slats were just a little bit too tight. I could have used my hammer to hammer it down, but I didn't want to create any bowing in the table. I decided to do what I should have done in the first place and was to cut the slats out on my table saw. I used a track saw to cut the piece of MDF in half just to make it a little bit more manageable. And then I took it over the table saw and ripped all the slats. But let me tell you the ideal way to cut these slats. I have five inches on center for my tracks. And that means that the slats are roughly four and five eighths of an inch long. So if I were to do this again, I would rip the slats at exactly four and five eighths of an inch wide. Then I'd set the table saw blade to be the height of my T-track and cut the inner groove. 
It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch wide, and that means I could do it in two passes on the table saw, moving the second pass over only about a sixteenth of an inch. And you can even use this technique to kind of sneak up the size and get to fit just perfectly. If you're going to do it this way, make sure you have a blade with a flat top, otherwise you're going to have a groove in the top. Another way to do it would just be to use a router table. Once I had all the slats cut, I could mount them to the base spoil board. I manually marked out five hole locations and just drilled them with a pilot hole drill bit to countersink them in. However, it might have been better or faster just use the CNC machine. I just did it this way because I didn't have to figure out how to clamp down the pieces. Like I said earlier, I didn't use my table saw to cut the slats and I had to open up the slot with my CNC table. I don't really recommend doing this. The downcut bit left a clean top but a fuzzy bottom which kind of makes movement a little bit sticky for my pieces. Before I machined the dog holes, I surfaced the spoil board. Surfacing it ensures the entire table is flat with respect to your spindle and rails, and it can be done whenever the spoil board gets worn away a bit. If you use Fusion 360, then you can download my dog hole location in my Fusion 360 CAD file, but if you use vCarve, you could probably download Jay Bates' file and just use his dog hole locations. For the dog holes, I first did some test cuts in a scrap piece of MDF to just make sure I could get the dogs to fit in just perfectly. Variations in bit size, the way a machine works, speeds and feeds, means you kind of have to figure it out. The last thing I did was to run a tool path to open up the center holes, and these are the ones that allow bolt head to slide into the T-track from the middle of the table. So that's it for building a CNC spoil board. The description will have links to all the files I talked about today and you can download them for free. Now, I use Fusion 360 for my files, but you could use Vetric VCarve by downloading the VCarve files that Avid CNC provides for their base spore board hole locations, and then you could download Jay Bates' one for the dog hole locations. And I'd really like to thank Jay Bates for his excellent design. It was a great starting point and gave me a ton of ideas. So thanks, Jay. And thank you, everyone else. I hope you found this useful. Bye, everyone.